that boy? Hey, why do we try and play like I ain't got no juice? Uh, you're the king of juice. I'm telling you. Hey, Tash! Let's ride! Let's ride! Let's ride! You good? Shut the end. Shut the end. That was my first game, NBA, since I've been in college. So it was definitely good to be back home in my home state and then being able to see my people from my mom and my dad's side. And it was at least, I think it was at least like 20 of them there, 20 to 30. But now I realize that no matter where I'm at, what I do, somebody looking at me, no matter if it's a little kid in the grocery store or like younger guys out at practice and stuff. So I always walk around with that chip on my shoulder, just like try to do the right thing and just be a great example for the younger guys and the younger generation coming up. J Bart, Slack, Slack, I'm with it. Hey, hey, good morning. I'm Mike Duck. That's not crazy. Young Drew on the mic, yeah. you know I'm about to spit, yeah. everybody talking, can't get his wig pill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> J. Bart, Yo. I just want to say I appreciate you, bro. I appreciate you, bro. You come here every day, head down, work. You don't work. I don't never hear no complaining. I ain't no complaining about. You feel me? You make me, you make me come here every day easy. I'm like, J. Bart don't complain, how can I complain? You feel me, bro? Rich homie, babe. <laughs> that right, too. Rich homie, babe. <laughs> that right. Bro. Let, me, let me get a little fame, man. That's hey, like the. Mama, I love you. Hey, bro, give me some fame, girl. Mama, you, I love you. can't you. hear me? Can you hear me? Hey. How you mute this? Hey, bro, give me some fame, bro. Big take. Mama, I get hey, a dollar. Hey, shout out, Mama, I love you, man. Shout out, Mama, I love you, man. I have a dollar. I'll give you a couple dollars, bro. I just need a dollar. What we got? Uh, it's. It's great playing with uh, like your best friends because you see all the hard work that y'all put in, like from especially like with me, he, Sue, and Chad. Like you see work that we put in since freshman. So like to now, and it's like damn, bro. Like we grew, like we improved a lot, and now just seeing each other shine on Saturdays. That's my favorite part about Saturdays. I think that make me more excited than me making plays myself. Energies, especially on Friday nights, because we know it like. At that time, it was almost war time, and we've been priming up all week, night right before the game, so we gotta bring that energy. If we want the energy on game day, we can't just fake it on game day, because this could be fake. So the same energy we get on game day, we need it on throughout the week in practice. <laughs> Crazy, like, of course, if you in Greenville, if it's a game in Greenville, it's gonna be packed out. But we was at ODU, and I seen, I swear, I seen a lot more purple than I was expecting, a lot more purple than it was, especially on the visitor side. It was a lot more purple than they. So that's always exciting to see. I just love playing at Dowdy, man. Just like, it don't get no better. It's such a beautiful stadium, beautiful fan base, and they mean the world. Cause I'm always a, I'm always a guy who feeds off the crowd. I always try to get the crowd into it and stuff. So just seeing them and then seeing them react, like after I tell them, like get up and stuff, that'd be the best feeling ever. The community of Greenville is awesome. So me and a couple of the guys, we, uh. Went to a local hospital on Monday and uh, interacted with a lot of the kids and tried to put a smile on their face because they're going through a little hard time to let them know that everything will be okay. Me, Surat, Elijah, Rajay, Chase, and Siobhan, we put our money together to uh, buy season tickets and donate them to the hospital. So then, and then the hospital get to pick a kid and the kid get to pick. I think it's five tickets per kid, and they get to pick uh, their family and friends to come to different Saturday games, home games. E T U win.
Want to say anything to the people in Canada? Oh, hello people in Canada. I hope you're watching. And if you're not watching, then you should be watching. Hopefully this is a nationwide coverage. No. It should be. Better be. Country. What would that be? be nationwide. Global coverage? Global. Is that right? Nationwide. Something like that. Close enough. Yeah. Coaching changes happened at the previous place I was at. Um, and once I got into the portal, I mean, I met Coach Houston. Um, I met some of the people on the staff, and I mean, I've played here before, being that I played in this conference. So, I mean, I know what Dowdy Ficklin is and what it can be and stuff like that. So, that was another thing that drew me here. Ultimately, I feel like it's the atmosphere in the locker room. I mean, these guys, Big Tay, and all the leadership role, like people in this locker room are amazing. It's going to be right though. Uh, I really feel like an op. Do they have this type of uh, technology when you were a kid, when you were younger? You act like I'm that old. <laughs> Not that old. Hey, when you were growing up, did y'all still play with uh, rubber caps, helmets? Come on, you. Oh, boy. Who do you think is winning in a fried Oreo eating competition? I'm talking to, I'm talking to every single one of you guys that's over in this fucking drill. Right here, straight mm -hmm. up, back to inside shoulder. Four, I want the fucking two. double team to pull at least two yards in the second Throw you. Part. Throw you part Oreo. Let's go. Ready, ready. You. Why do you say that? Because you're fat. Uh, the answer to the first part about the culture, I feel like it's trust. Listen, that happens January 10th, 15th, or whenever we first get here and start and uh, winter workouts and stuff like that. You see a guy, he's either going to show up or he's not. And I mean, trust is a big thing in that locker room. Like last week, you get in a hostile environment, you only got 50 players and 20 people on staff. So it's 70 people versus. 35,000 so it's like um, no matter good or bad stick together and just kind of just ride the wave. Appreciate y'all for everything. See, earlier they couldn't see the baby boy's face. <laughs> Where I was previously, I there were some older guys in front of me, so I really didn't have to have that leadership role. So uh, last year, that was something I had to grow into. And then this year, I feel like it's something that I've really grown into. And being on leadership council, we got a big voice in the locker room. Christina plays a huge role in the team because she, like I said, she's in charge of the breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then she controls like what we eat outside on the field. Whether or not we, she thinks we need fuel, she'll come over there and give us a look like gummies, the honey stingers, or like the little bars. So, and her her crew, they always on top of us out there in practice. Ever since I've been here, Coach has just really wanted to improve the nutrition offerings and what we do for the guys from a nutrition perspective. He really um, pushes everything that we can provide for the guys and making sure that they've got great options around at all times, uh, just to make sure that they're fueled up and ready to go when it comes to practice, games, training, anything we're asking them to do. Shout out Christina. Let's go, grandpa. Best nutritionist in the nation. She get the job done. Yeah, so one of them is here in the fueling station. This space is available to the guys anytime they have a workout. So whether that's, you know, weights or conditioning, they are in here. This is available to them at all times. If they're being asked to use a lot of energy, we've got to put a lot of energy back in the tank in that form of really great food and really great nutrition. So it's important that they have things available to them regularly throughout the day. And that's where a big emphasis is in place. I mean, they do a great job. I mean, like when I first got here, that was one of the first meetings I had was get in there, meet with her, and kind of explain what my goals were um, in terms of weight-wise and uh, just future like performance goals as a whole. Um, and they set up a good plan for me, and I feel like in terms of the shakes and stuff that they make close lift and stuff like that, they do a great job. Um, those one-on-one -on -one meetings are really used, uh, that time is really used to make sure that they have a great nutrition plan, uh, whether that be what time to have their snacks, what they should be waking up and eating in the morning before practice, what they need to prioritize post-practice so that they can go through the rest of the day fueled up really well, um, and sometimes hydration. They're not 
taking enough focus on that. So um, those one-on-one -on -one meetings are really important so that we can get into the nitty gritty with, with them and figure out what they're doing and where they can be better um, so that we can work with them to get them to perform at their best on the field on Saturdays. I mean, this fan base is crazy. I mean, Greenville is an awesome place. I mean, they love the football program here and it shows every single Saturday we play here. Team mindset going into this weekend is 1-0. Like our mindset every week and just try to go in and continue to have a great season and fix mistakes and just keep stacking from week to week.